Welcome to Portland Rising, the monthly news, entertainment, and interview program presented by the Portland Phoenix, your weekly alternative independent newspaper and website. The Phoenix has always had a great interest in covering the arts and entertainment, both fine arts, theater, and music. And today we're gonna to take a look at, with, some, with two of our critics, Megan Grumbling, and Sam Feifel at, the, at what's coming up this summer, what to look forward to as these arts programs recover from what is a terrible year from the pandemic. And at first, I'd like to welcome Megan Grumbling. Megan is our longtime theater critic, as well as a writer and teacher. So welcome, Megan. How are you today? Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mary, and I'm glad to be here. Um, I'm doing well, and I'm excited for some more theater to be happening than we've had over the last year. Great. Well, why don't you tell us about that? What What are the highlights for you as you look forward? Yeah. So, um, as you said, the last year has been a struggle, and a lot of theaters have adapted in various ways, and we've seen a lot of sort of pivoting to online filmed theater that is then available for streaming and we are going to continue to see some of that as theaters are you know playing a little bit safe there's a lot of there's a there takes a time to to plan for this stuff so some theaters have been playing it safe and they're planning and so we'll see some continue to be online as well as some theaters opening up their doors at full capacity and some outdoor theater returning um, so we'll have kind of a variety of uh, approaches this summer but here are some highlights. So one is Port Fringe, which is turning 10 years old this year, which is really exciting. And Port Fringe, not theater exactly, it's fringe, which means that it is kind of edgy, out of the box, you don't know what you're gonna get, all kinds of weird stuff. And they are one of the events or organizations that, are, that have been playing it safe and they've put the whole festival online and you can watch these short works. There will be 21 of them for Port Fringe 21, and you can see them in seven different programs that have been curated. So those will be, those will be online from uh, June 11th through June 19th, along with, you can watch these in a sort of live watch party situation with live chats and Q and A. So they're really doing a lot to cultivate that sense of community that has long been a part of Port Fringe on the ground. So that is something I really suggest everybody check out. And another, another longtime festival that's gonna be happening a little bit after that is the Maine Playwrights Festival, which is in its 19th year now. So this is a really long standing celebration of Maine, Maine writers. And they have also opted to go all online. And um, what they've done is they have five short plays that are being fully rehearsed and fully staged. And then they've been collaborating with local filmmakers to um, bring you the festival safely and online. So that's gonna be happening from June 21st through July 11th. And um, again, a great way to support local, local theater local writers as well as local filmmakers. So interesting to see collaborations like that happening as a result of the pandemic. And it will be more interesting too to see if any of this sticks in terms of collaborations and multidisciplinary fun once we're out of the pandemic. Um, but some more traditionally structured and produced stuff will also be happening. So if you've been craving some outdoor theater and a grass with a picnic, we have options coming up for that, including I'm happy to report the return of the Phoenix Theater Company. That's F-E-N-I-X, Phoenix. And they've been around for many years doing great work in Daring Oaks Park. And they're gonna be producing this year, The Comedy of Errors, Shakespeare. So that'll be running July 8th through 31st. Um, always fun to take a picnic in the park for that. And the Ziggurat Theater has long been doing works as outdoors as part of the Camden Shakespeare Festival. And they will be doing a show that I saw several years ago called Aquitania, 
which is a great show full of like sort of magic and myth and parallel adventures and a board game and all kinds of crazy stuff, wonderful costumes. And they'll be doing a series of outdoor events, both in Camden and around the state, including in Bodenham, Bath, Monson, and possibly, hopefully, Portland. So um, that's a little bit TBD, but you can check out uh, Ziggurat Theater and, and find that lineup. So summer is usually the season of outdoor kind of light frolicsome theater, but because of the the deprivation we've had of drama over the last year indoors. I'm excited to see uh, some drama, a work of drama coming indoors. And that will be the first play back on stage of Portland Players, which is the oldest theater company in Portland, longest running. And that is gonna be Yasmina Reza's God of Carnage, which is this show about um, kind of how chaotic and devolved human beings can be. So if you're looking for a little bit of that after the last year for catharsis purposes, that's going to be running from June 11th through 26th at Portland Players. And um, they're doing reduced capacity still for seating as far as I know. So um, they'll be showing that in buying tickets in positive two. And then we've got the indoor musicals. So if musicals are your thing, that's coming back as well. And a lot of that's gonna be at full capacity. So Main State Music Theater is a, is a big uh, musical, musical draw in the summer. And they're gonna be doing a, kind of a bunch of different things. One is some co-productions with Portland Stage Company, which they've done in the past and they're doing two this year. One is they're both jukebox numbers, so kind of vehicles for music you may know and love. One by the Everly Brothers, that's called Dream, and it's running in July. And the other is uh, Ring of Fire, which is of course Johnny Cash, which is running in August. The Everly Brothers one is gonna be running in Brunswick and the Portland Stage Company Theater will be running Ring of Fire. Both of those will be at full capacity as far as I know. So lots of tickets to be had. Um, and then the Gunko Playhouse, of course, a very old, you know, back to the barnstorming days of, of, of musicals. They're gonna be doing, the, they amazingly constructed this full outdoor theater, which is open air, but roofed. So their shows will be in this outdoor theater, which is called the Leary Pavilion and tickets being sold in pods. They're starting off with a jukebox show called Escape to Margaritaville, Jimmy Buffett. So. Um, so that's a little bit in the musical department and I have one more virtual thing that I think I'm really, I'm really excited about and it is the return of Bloomsday. If you know Bloomsday, that's the celebration of James Joyce's Ulysses. If you've ever tried to read it, you know that it is not the easiest read. I once asked somebody if they'd ever read Ulysses and he said, I've read the words. And if you have read the words and not quite known if you understood the words, this is the event because it is um, Ulysses for Beginners and the American Irish Repertory Ensemble um, with artistic director Tony Riley, who is an amazing actor, writer, producer, director, human being, uh, much loved in Portland. And it, he is the writer of this show and it will kind of take you through the ABCs in a very uh, user-friendly and enjoyable fashion. And it is gonna be, happening online through the main Irish Heritage Center, which is right here in the West End. And um, you can show up wearing your best Bloomsday attire. You're invited to do that. That might include cooking a kidney and eating, drinking some ale while you do. So those are some of my highlights and um, yeah, hoping to see some folks out there at some shows. Megan, that sounds great. How exciting to be looking forward to all those shows and, and uh, cover so many bases in, in a short period of time. Those, those all sound great. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to turn it over to Elizabeth Clemente, who's going to be talking to Sam Feifel about what's on board for music this summer. Elizabeth? Yes, thank you, Marion, so much. That was great, Megan. Um, obviously, just discussed what's happening in theater here, but a huge part of the Portland art scene is music. So Sam, what can you tell us as the world reopens? What can we expect in the realm of live music here this summer? Hey, Liz, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, I, I would love to be able to answer that question super confidently, but I think um, it's going to be a little bit of a uh, you know, hiccups and, you know, starts and stops to, to live music, seeing what people want to do and 
um, how people are going to kind of engage with live music again, because, you know, so much of so much of the concert experience is being pressed up against the front of the stage. You know, I, uh, I think about Thompson's Point or I think about Geno's or I think about wherever I go. You know, part of the fun is that whole like snake through the crowd to find your exact spot and, you know, try not to be in front of a shorter person. But, you know, you know, you're sort of scooching into your little territory. And, uh, you know, that that's kind of it's kind of fun being amongst people. And I think that's part of that live music experience, especially at a rock show or a hip hop show, you know, is the all doing things at the same time. And we're going to have to see if having a person right here is uh, still comfortable for people. I, I think I'm going to be OK with it. I actually did a little dry run and I, I ate at the bar at Taco Escobar last week with no mask on and nobody else had a mask on. And uh, it felt freaking great uh, to just, you know, be at a bar and drink and talk to people and talk to the bartender. And um, so, you know, I think people, some people are going to be there with masks on and some people are going to be just ready to rock and roll. And I think some people are going to, you know, kind of stay out at the back. And I, I expect the outdoor shows to kind of be the, the, the first ones that people feel comfortable in a crowd. So, you know, Thompson's Point gets kicked off on uh, July 30 with Nathaniel Rateliff. Um, and that sold out like in a minute. And then, you know, Leg Street Dive is on August 21st. Boom, that was gone in like two days. So it seems like people are, are comfortable with Thompson's Point. Um, if you want to know about a show that, you know, you actually can still get tickets to, you can go see Jason Mraz on August 25th and or on August 24th. And then right after that is uh, Wilco and Slater Kinney, which is, I don't know, pretty much dream come true for me having uh, gone to college in 1993 when those bands were hot as hell. Uh, I'm really excited to go see that. Um, and then actually, I think the best show so far that's been booked in Maine is the St. Vincent show on September 3rd, uh, which I'm going to count as uh, still summer. Um, I think that show is going to be amazing. I saw her at Austin City Limits uh, two years ago, three years ago, and uh, she puts on a super freaky show like costumes and weird stuff and uh you know people in the back with like you know no clothes on so i highly highly recommend the saint vincent show um and then also main state uh main savings pavilion i have to say it every time i call it rock row i don't know if that's like an illegal name sorry main savings whatever you are i don't even know if that's a bank or a place but um, they have a cool show coming that i think i might go to just because i'm a huge allman brothers fan i used to you know, just as a guitar player, you know, Dickie Betts was a big hero of mine and uh, just love, you know, guitar bands in general. They have this uh, Spirit of the South tour that's coming to the uh, Rock Row where there's like a, um, a mobile Allman Brothers Museum that you can go to and uh, has all this, you know, Greg and Dwayne Allman paraphernalia and, you know, so it should be pretty cool. And uh, Blackberry Smoke is actually playing. And then there's an Almond Betts band that has like some of the kids of the Almond Brothers and and uh, and uh, Dwayne Betts or Dickie Betts. I, I get them all mixed up. So I'm not going to know the names exactly. Uh, but I so then that also right after them, they have a Brothers Osborne show uh, on July 31. And, uh, you know, I, I think that like country solo cup kind of thing uh, is going to be pretty fun this summer. Um, so I encourage people to go there. Although, there, I noticed that their um, their tour slogan is that we're not for everyone. Um, so, which I thought was interesting, you know, like telling people don't come to our show. I haven't really seen that very much, but um, so that'll be fun. But, you know, maybe people want to be indoors. Not everybody loves being out in the sun. Um, so, you know, Aura is actually, I think maybe getting kicked off the first with a June 18 show uh, inside with Love by Numbers and Sarah Halley Richardson and the Amarantos Quartet. Um, and, you know, that's very much a more sit down sort of show. Um, then after that, they have uh, Zema Libre, which is a dance band on June 25th. They have Sons of All, uh, All Fond, which is a local country band on July 2nd. They have Mercy Lago, a heavy rock band on uh, July 9. And then they even have like a Stones cover band on the 16th. So they've got like their Fridays. I think those are all locked down. And, uh, you know, that, those are be fun. But I think that's where the proof, well, are people going to want to go inside and like get sweaty with Zema Libre? That's going to, you know, I'd, I'd be super interested in that. 
Um, the State Theater um, is a little bit slower to put indoor shows in. Their first one is uh, Melissa Etheridge on August 31st. Um, and so I think they're taking a little bit more of a wait and see, uh, like, unlike Aura, which is kind of driving right in. But, you know, once September hit, they've got a bunch of stuff. They got Lettuce, they have Enter the Haggis, they have um, Dr. Dog, which is um, their sort of farewell tour. So, you know, there, there's some great stuff coming up for sure, you know, and I think it'll just be, do they really want to go? That, that's going to be the curiosity for me. Right, for sure. And for people that maybe are a little bit apprehensive about the bigger venues, you know, Thompson's Point, State Theater, Aura, things like that, what's going on in the smaller venues in Portland? Because those are obviously another big draw to the scene here, being a little more intimate, kind of cozy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's always, you know, that's, that's my, you know, local music jam. That's where I spend most of my time. Uh, I think they're all kind of doing a, a little bit of a different vibe. They're easing into it. Um, you know, Portland House of Music's first thing has been is now on the table. Uh, they are July 9 is their first show uh, with the Main Dead Project, which is sort of like the house band uh, at Portland House of Music. Um, they're there all the time. They're comfortable. People, the people who go see the Main Dead Project will go see them anywhere. So I think that's a smart move. Um, and then after that, the next show they have on the calendar is August 7th. So there's a whole month gap in there. And I think they're probably going to fill in local shows, assuming everything goes well on July 7th. Uh, Blue is kind of the same way. They've got some jazz bands. They've got uh, something booked for June 19th with Taylor O'Donnell, which is more of a singer songwritery thing. Um, then they have Michael Bailing, who's a jazz player on July 3rd. So there's a gap in there. You know, it's not the calendar isn't filled in. Um, Sun Tiki, their first show is with The Worst, uh, which I've you really should go see them. They are awesome. It's a big throwback to, you know, kind of grunge fun uh, with Brooke Binion as the lead. They're starting off August 6th. So that's still, you know, good month, two months away. Um, and then the first show that I can see at Geno's is September 25th with the Lowered, which is kind of a doom metal-y sort of thing. But I would be shocked if all of those places didn't start filling things in as long as things go well, right? So I think all of them are really reticent to like jam the calendar and then have to cancel stuff again because that's you know the, I, I think they'll they'll just be too disappointed if they have to cancel a second time so uh, I think you know I would encourage people if you want to see live music go to some of these early shows and show them that you know the money's there for sure and you obviously have a lot of music knowledge is that Gino show in September your first planned concert or are you gonna go <laughs> <laughs> to uh, I think I'll see something before September 23rd um I actually really wanted to go see Lake Street Dive and completely blew it getting tickets. Um, so I'm probably gonna go to that Wilco show uh, with Slater Kinney in August, but I'll go to something before then. My band is playing um, some like gazebo shows and that kind of thing. But in terms of like a ticketed show, that might be the first one or uh, there's you know some festivals and things around the state that I'm looking at. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens. Awesome. Yeah, I was also hoping for Lake Street Dive. I don't know why I thought I had a prayer of getting tickets to that, but for some reason I did. Um, so, you know, looking at the statewide level, what do we have outside of Portland going on? Yeah, I would totally encourage people to travel because I think that's where some of the most laid back stuff is going to happen uh, without the kind of crush of people in Portland. Uh, one of the coolest things that uh, I think uh, hopefully I haven't missed out on it is um, the Mallet Brother Band are going to release their new record, Gold Light, up at Bissell Brothers Milo uh, Brewery, which is in Piscataquis County, you know, good solid drive from Portland. Uh, they have two shows, July 2nd and 3rd. I know the July 2 one is sold out uh, as of this taping uh, on June 10th. And uh, hopefully the July 3 one, uh, I can grab some tickets to. Uh, Bissell is brewing up a special gold light beer that they're going to release with the album release, which is super cool. And uh, I'm just imagining this. I haven't been there, but I'm imagining the setting is awesome. Um, and then the Mouths are also going to be at this Moosehead Music Festival, which uh, I think is brand new, just sort of as a response to COVID. Um, that's July 23 through 25. And the Mouths are there with their dad, David Mallet. Um, Don Campbell is there. The Boneheads are getting back together to play that show. Uh, that's like, it, it feels like really defiant. It's like all these kind of older uh, sort of veteran main musicians that are like, I'm going to just play a freaking show. I don't care, you know? So uh, I, I think that would be super fun if you want to drive up to, to Greenville and Moosehead. 
Um, there's a, the bluegrass festivals are coming back, which we've really missed. Uh, Blistered Fingers returns to Litchfield Fairgrounds on June 17. They've got a great lineup of classic bluegrass. Um, that's something that I may hit. Uh, they also are gonna, I think, reprise it in uh, August. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, there's even a reggae festival at Point Sebago on June 12th. Probably most people seeing this have already missed it, but um, like, I, you know, I guess there are reggae festivals at Point Sebago, but I had never heard of that before. And I was like, oh, great, awesome, you know? Uh, there's even a River Rock Festival, July 2nd and 3rd at uh, Sunday River in Bethel, which is uh, Christian Rock, I guess, which seem, I don't know, they have like good posters and it seems like the tickets are expensive. I know almost nothing about Christian rock, but it seems like, hey, if this is your thing, it'll be a big deal. Um, kind of similarly, there's a big jam band festival at Thomas Point Beach I haven't seen before. I would encourage people to look that up. It's got Kung Fu and Echoes of Floyd. And uh, I imagine uh, the dispensaries will do very good business right before that festival uh, as people are jamming out. Um, so, you know, I would just encourage people to get out of the state. I think these outdoor festivals are going to be really chill. Um, bands are bands are desperate to play. Um, you know, that doesn't mean uh, venue bookers that we want to play for free, but it does mean that uh, we will bust our butts playing because um, I know I am. And I know everybody I know is just super excited to play for fans again. Playing to a live stream sucks. Um, you know, getting zero feedback when you finish your song. Uh, you know, it's worse than recording because you're just like, it's like silence and you're like, I don't know, was that good? Maybe it sucked. I don't know. Um, so, you know, just that crowd feedback. I know that bands are going to be fired up for it. And, uh, you know, hopefully people are super supportive and, uh, you know, just realize that, um, you know, we don't have like a divine right to live music and it can be taken away from us for 18 months. And, uh, you know, if you want it, you got to go out there and support it. You really, you know, buy, buy a couple extra beers for your friends or whatever. Um, let's get these venues, you know, back to solvent. That would be great. Absolutely. Well, Sam, thank you so much. I know I, for one, am so excited and music is a huge part of the summer. So sounds like we have a lot to look forward to. And now I will send it back to Marion. Thank you so much. Uh, that was great, Sam. Wonderful. And uh, we're looking, it's really great to see what's going on and, and hey, to talk about and, and hear how much is going to be happening in, in recovery as we move into live entertainment. So thank you, Sam and Megan, for doing this show and helping us sh see what's going on out there. A reminder, um, we do these Portland Rising shows every month. and please, and they are sponsored by the Phoenix. And so look for the Phoenix newspaper at your newsstand and wherever free newspapers are available and also on the website at portlandphoenix.me. Thank you very much to Leslie and Josh at Portland Media Center for orchestrating this show. And we will see you all in July. Thank you very much. Hey!